Saul said $500 because it's a quarter of what you earned before. But actually what happens is it's not that you get a quarter of the actual amount of the interest. You get a quarter of the percentage. Okay? So what this means is if you have 4% interest compounded quarterly, you're going to get 1% interest four times. Times 1.01, and I need to do this four times, so why not just raise that to the fourth power? So, so put that... 54,111. 54,111. Really? You got one times zero one? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Point. Point. Four. One. Point four one. Can somebody confirm that? That looks a little high to me, but still. You can look at this if you don't believe it. No, I believe you. I'm just thinking that. I just want to. Uh, no, come look. Okay, I'll come look. <laughs> Fifty-four one point. That's put in correctly. Okay, are you guys seeing an advantage here? <laughs> $2,000 versus $4,000. So if you can find a savings rate with compound interest, life's a little better. Okay? And equations like this will show up um, in the homework next week. Tonight we're going to talk about the number E, though. That's not a number. It's a letter that represents a number. I don't like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. One of the earlier explorations of E and what E means, it's a number like pi. Say that much. It's a constant, and it is also a never-ending decimal with a never-repeating pattern, which means it can never be represented as a fraction. So just like pi is 3.14159 going on forever and ever, E is a similar number, and we're going to discover it ourselves a little bit here. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet. Um, there was an experiment that I want you to imagine. Okay, we'll make a table based on it. The experiment is $1.00. At 100% interest um, is affected by compound interest in the following manner. One dollar, 100% interest. This is actually a thought experiment, okay? Because no one's ever going to invest just a dollar, and no one is going to give you 100% interest. That'd be amazing. But if they did, okay, we're going to make a little table here. Don't start writing the table yet until I figure out how big it's going to be. But here's my one dollar, okay? That's my start. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you do that by hand. Would you do 50,000 times 1.01 to the fourth, or do you 1.01 to the fourth times 50,000? Um, you would get, if you're doing it by hand, exponents before multiplication in order of operations. So if you wind up with just a four-function calculator next time on the test, you got to remember the order that functions go. Um, good question. Okay, so we start with one dollar. Okay, and if we do simple interest, it always comes out to one. Well, hold on a sec. If we do one dollar with simple interest, okay, what do you get? You don't need a calculator for this. Two dollars. You have two dollars at the end of a year, because a hundred percent interest means you double your money, right? Okay. okay. Now, compound. Well, compounded two times a year, you start with your dollar. Okay. And then what you do is now, this compounding it every six months means, compounding it every six months means you um, get 50% interest twice. You get 50% interest twice. So you take your dollar and you multiply it times 1.5. 1.5 will make something 50% bigger. And you multiply it. And you multiply it by that twice. And what do you get when you multiply a dollar times 1.5 twice? Is that what you get? Did you check? No. Yeah, that's right, actually. Double check me, though. That's 225, right? Because first you'll get 50 cents of interest. Then you'll get 50% of $1.50, which is 75 cent interest. 
Very good. Okay, now let's compound it quarterly, four times in the year, starting with our dollar. How does this equation look from compounding it quarterly? Bless you. Bless you. What will make something 25% bigger? What decimal do I multiply by to make something 25% bigger? 1.25. This makes things 25% bigger. And how many times will I multiply my dollar times that? Four. And what will I get? 2.44. Okay, these are big jumps. If this were applied to large amounts of money, this would be fantastic. Look at that. I got 25 extra cents here. And now I got, what is that, 19 extra cents? So I got less of a jump, but still a big jump. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. We're going to see what happens. If we compound the interest 12 times, we're going to do this once a month, okay? We're going to start with our dollar, and we're going to multiply our dollar, okay, 12 times. What is 100%? It's 100% interest, but we've got to divide that by 12. What is 100 divided by 12 as a decimal? Somebody with a calculator. 100 divided by 12. It's 8.33 repeated. 8.33 repeated. And we're going to multiply. Whoops, I didn't write that correctly. How should I write this? No, that would be 180%. What am I, I'm sure this is going to make it 1.083 repeating. And I need to multiply that by the dollar 12 times. Would you have to show the repeating sign in your calculator? There's no real way to do that. I just actually hit like about six or seven threes and then trust the rounding at that point. Okay, who's going to give me that one? $2.60. How much of an advantage is that over $2.44? How many more pennies did we get? 16. Okay, so first... We, come, we went from simple interest to compounded twice yearly, we get 25 extra cents. We go to four times, we get 19 extra cents. We go to 12 times a year, we only get 14 extra cents. So we're getting what's called a diminishing return. There's a point past which this might not be worth it. I want to compound it. Somebody's going to really have to help me with a calculator here. I want to compound this 365 times. Daily? I want to compound this daily. <laughs> All right. I want to see what the, well, this is getting close to the maximum possible advantage. Um, so that means I'm going to take my $1. Mr. Bellabout? Yes. You know this would never happen in real life, right? I can dream. Okay, and I'm going to multiply it now. Okay, what is, Actually, we're not ready. what's 100 divided by 365? A number. Which number? Again, so? No, no, that's the other way around. Point two. Point two. Point two. Point two. Point two. Point two. Seven. Okay. Now, if I want to make this a percent, I always move the decimal over. So this is point zero zero two seven percent. So that means I need to multiply this by one times. That's what you do for every percent. Fifty percent is point five. Yeah, because I had a decimal in front of the 2.7. So if I move it over twice, 